Okay, recording. Okay, hello everyone. Um, this is going to be a Unity tutorial on how to use collision objects uh, with an animated character, how to get the objects to follow along with the parts of the animated character. All right, so I'm going to switch back and forth between what's um, on my screen and what is being recorded here. So let me show you the concept I have here. It will illustrate what we have going on. So this is an app I was working on for the iPad uh, I call Touch Animator. The concept is, or was, to um, have an actual, a fully featured uh, character animation program uh, that you could run on your iPad. So I have this kind of demo character, this uh, warrior, or this uh, soldier here. And um, for example, I go in my translation mode. I can go ahead and select on various body parts, like I have this foot target, and I can move um, it around. Now again, everything you're seeing is at a very uh, primitive level, because it's just a, you know a proof of concept here. I can move his legs around. I can move his uh, I can move his torso and stuff. And uh, I can, for example, I could select his head. I could go into my rotate mode. And I could rotate his head around. All right. And um, you know, as you can see, it's um it would be pretty intuitive because you could, uh, for example, you could. Uh, just touch and animate, and then here's a the little frame slider at the bottom. You can just drag your flame frame slider to a new time and set a keyframe. Uh, so everything is touch based, and then um, in the end, uh, you know, you can go ahead and, and get a new viewpoint or whatever. And then uh, in the end, uh, because BBH is a uh, standard um, file format for exporting animation, it's just a text file, so it's going to spit out. It would spit out a BBH file that you could email to yourself or something. So that would be the concept. You could animate on the go anywhere you wanted to. Um, my programming abilities are maybe not up to the capability yet of doing uh, a full-fledged thing like this yet. But um, what I want to show you, let's go back into my rotate mode here and start selecting some parts of the body here. All right. So I'll, I'll move him all the way over in some crazy position here. All right. And then as you can see, when I select the forearm uh, of this character. I can still select this even though he's moved uh, in this kind of bizarre, crazy manner here. And uh, that's because I have collision objects attached to this mesh at certain points. And um, as you can see, anywhere I, I go with these, I am in fact, um, oops, able to, like I said, there's some bugs that need to be worked out. But anyway, I'm the, the collision objects are following along with the animated character. And that's one of the things that I want to show you in this tutorial. All right. So now uh, I'm going to uh, do a combination of um, manipulating the character on screen and possibly using the Unity remote to control that. So I'll get back to that in a second. All right. So here is the animated character, or the character. And um, you can see here in Unity, uh, this character was called Hero. He came with the standard assets of Unity. And if I select him, you can see all these like collision objects that I kind of parented into him. So if I go in and drill down into the uh, hierarchy, you'll see that uh, anything you bring in, like uh, FBX format, for example, if you bring in an animated character out of Blender or something, then what you'll find is that even though you cannot see the uh, bones or the armature, that there are little null objects inside of your character. Um, as you can see when I select them, if I select the spine, for example, of course it's selecting all the, the objects that are parented to it. But if I select the spine um, on these things, you can see that there's these little null objects that are in here that are controlling this. So if I start moving this around, you'll see in fact that you can actually manipulate this guy on the fly here. And uh, what I did was I just created some scripts that basically uh, I gave some of these things, for example, a name. I, I gave them, or, or for example, I gave them a tag. I called them uh, a joint, like a, not a joint that you would smoke, but a joint that you, in your body, uh, a bone. And um, then I went ahead and just added some scripts, uh, you know, uh, a script like this to select, se select the joint. Okay, let's bring this up. All right. Now this is a bit, of course, too much to uh, see at once, but the, the basic concept I want to show you is that um, what I did was I just went in here and, for example, we'll go under the left arm, we'll go to the forearm here, 
Uh, what I did was I just created a, a box collider object. I turned on its is trigger uh, option. I just parented it to that um, that little uh, uh, bone null there, and um, then whenever let me go ahead and select this arm here, and we'll go into rotate mode. So, well, actually, let me select this forearm and turn the no, I, it does not have a mesh render. I can't show that to you, but you can still see it here when I select it. So as you can see, when I rotate the uh, upper arm, the lower arm. Uh, Box Collider uh, follows with it, all right? So even though this mesh is deforming, you know, it, it the uh, the colliders will, in fact, uh, follow along no matter what. It behaves the way you would expect it to. Now, you may be asking, why can't I just select this hero and go under Component, Physics, and uh, Mesh Collider, all right? So we could turn Mesh Collider, we could, we could say Is Trigger, well, uh, and then you could select the mesh here of this guy. Uh, for example, if there was a, a, a mesh in here somewhere of, of the hero character, uh, you could select it from this list. But, um, well, the, the thing is, is that the mesh uh, collider is really just for, like, static objects, like a terrain or something like that. So, um, I'm going to remove that component. Because you, when you animate the character, the mesh collider is not going to update to see the animations, uh, the deformation happen. So if you want to have something, you know, for example, let's say you have some sort of undulating terrain or, or something like that, you're, you're going to have to probably, unless there's another way to do it, which I haven't found yet, you are going to have to do this methodology of cleverly parenting things, uh, box uh, colliders or, or collision objects, uh, parenting them to the different areas of it. I would go ahead and if you have, for example, some sort of animated mesh or undulating terrain or something like that, if you have it animating, I would go into your animation package and insert some bone uh, objects somewhere in that uh, mesh parented to certain uh, or fix a certain uh, uh, vertices. And then I would go ahead and those things, when you bring in your object, those items will show up just like this. They will show up as these little... Let me find a place that doesn't have... Let's see, Nick. Okay. So, uh, you know, they will come in as these little null objects. And then once those little null objects are in your scene, you can manipulate them like you can any other object in Unity. You can give them a tag. You can drag scripts onto them. You can drag collision objects onto them. And uh, then I, I would say that was probably your, your best way of doing it, is um, if you have some sort of anime character or something, I would go ahead and, and do this method. I, I at least know for sure that, that this works and stuff. So, And um, so that is the basics of doing that. Basically, you just uh, if you have an animated mesh, I would say like that, uh, go ahead, uh, add bones to your mesh uh, in your animation program, export it when it comes in here, make sure that the little... Um, you know, null bone objects uh, come in, and then just manipulate them like anything else. Bring, uh, add a, go into, for example, we see here the left shoulder does not have one yet. Just go into component physics box collider. As you'll see, the box collider gets added. It's and turn on its is trigger, or else it won't see it. And then just resize the box collider to the size that you want. All right, and that's pretty much it. Then you just drag your scripts on there. And you'll be able to manipulate just the way you uh, manipulate anything else. All right, so uh, that's the basics of using that. Uh, if there's any questions, let me know. Uh, if anyone out there is a, a programming guru who knows a lot about uh, IK and things like that and wants to help out with the uh, or do a partnership on the Touch Animator program, let me know. I'm, I'm kind of in over my head a little bit on that one. Uh, I think it'd be a great program if it uh, ever gets worked out, and I hope it, uh, you know, gets done at some point.